Oumuamua has already left. It has passed Neptune's orbit and is so far away that no telescope can ever observe it again. Its origins and nature remain a mystery, sparking heated debate in the scholarly community to this day. Was it a shard of a damaged planet thrown our way by a faraway star? Was it a piece of alien technology given to our solar system by an enigmatic intelligence either unintentionally or on purpose? Surprisingly, or perhaps unsurprisingly, experts continue to support both views as viable. Oumuamua's peculiar nature makes it impossible to characterize as a comet, an asteroid, or something man-made. However, such a classification may be necessary because six additional objects have been discovered in our solar system that have Oumuamua's most perplexing feature, its propensity to accelerate, with no clear explanation for where such acceleration is coming from. Hello and welcome to Z. And now we'll look at Oumuamua and the six new dark comets, as well as the theories that have emerged in recent years as scientists try to explain something that has so far resisted clear explanation. To summarize briefly, Oumuamua is the first known interstellar object to enter our solar system. It happened on October 19, 2017, and was discovered by the Haleakul Observatory in Hawaii. Scientists instantly realized there was something unusual about this object. It was small, perhaps between 100 and 1000 m long, and had an odd shape, possibly like a cigar or a flat dish. Its course and speed indicated that it will eventually exit our solar system, therefore scientists concluded that it could not have originated here. As a result, the object was given the Hawaiian name Umiwamua, which means scout or first distant messenger. Scientists were excited to study Umiwamua, the first of its kind that we know about, though admittedly not the first interstellar object to pass through our solar system, as there are trillions of possible candidates out there that have likely done the same, to learn what characteristics it might have that made it similar or dissimilar to objects found in our own solar system. They began to discover various anomalies as they went along. While Oumuamua was initially classed as a comet, it became clear that it lacked a coma, or cometary tail, and hence resembled an asteroid. However, Oumuamua's absence of coma became a puzzle when it was detected racing away from the sun on its gradual journey out of our solar system. The rate of acceleration was minor, only approximately 17 m per second when it was closest to the sun, but it was enough to raise eyebrows in academics. Oumuamua was not acting in accordance with physics. Oumuamua deviated from its path during the few months that scientists were able to monitor it. Objects can only accelerate when they are pushed, according to physics. As a result, scientists began to try to figure out what was propelling Oumuamua. A few basic hypotheses were swiftly discarded. This does not appear to be a simple shove from solar winds. While the sun's minuscule trace particles have been observed to push against objects in space, this modest force was insufficient to explain Oumuamua's acceleration, assuming it was an average asteroid. I should point out that this is an assumption, because even the finest photographs of Oumuamua only reveal a speck, making it difficult to say for certain what it looks like. The majority of speculations concerning its shape are based on fluctuations in its light curve, the brightness of which rose and decreased consistently as Oumuamua moved. This would not occur for a spherical object, but would occur for a tumbling irregularly shaped object such as a disc or a cigar. Comets were identified as another example of speeding objects in our solar system by scientists. As comets approach the sun, the ice within them heats and sublimates, transforming into gas and erupting from the comet's main body. This outpouring of gas and dust generates the comet's characteristic tail, but it also acts as a little thruster on the side closest to the sun, accelerating the comet away from the source of all that heat. However, as previously stated, scientists were unable to detect all of the dust and gas. They looked, but nothing seemed to be there. This void gave rise to further bizarre hypotheses. Consider an argument between two theorists, each having two hypotheses. 
The first theory drew the greatest attention. In a number of studies, Harvard professor Avi Loeb argued that Umiwamua could represent alien technology. In 2018, he claimed that solar winds may produce the acceleration witnessed with Umiwamua, but only if Umiwamua was significantly thinner than scientists had previously assumed, between 0.3 and 0.9 millimeters thin. Loeb reasoned that because a 1,000 m long, 1 mm thin device was unlikely to arise in nature, it had to be man-made, a light sail designed to catch solar winds and utilize them to speed through space from one star to another. Other members of the academic community were skeptical of this theory. Daryl Seligman, our second theorist and a postdoctoral researcher at Cornell University, reacted by co-authoring an article in 2020 claiming that the lack of outgassing from Umiwamua could be due to Umiwamua producing an unseen gas such as hydrogen. This would have been impossible to detect with the telescopes trained on Umiwamua. Seligman argued that Umiwamua was wholly or substantially composed of such hydrogen, a hydrogen iceberg that was sublimating as a result of the sun's warmth, and that it was this sublimation that was causing the push. Loeb was not convinced. A few months later, he co-wrote a study in which he speculated on the origins of this hydrogen iceberg. He demonstrated analytically that the starlight in the interstellar void was warm enough that any hydrogen iceberg created in even the closest dense molecular clouds would have melted before arriving. Loeb remained convinced that an alien explanation was the most likely. His rebuttal was powerful enough to send Seligman back to the drawing board, where he abandoned the hydrogen iceberg concept. Seligman, on the other hand, continued to toy with the concept that Umiwamua had been propelled by escaping pure hydrogen gas. He didn't know how this could be until he met with University of California assistant Professor Jennifer Bergner in 2023, who pointed to experiments in labs where water ice in extremely cold conditions hit with radiation could trap pockets of hydrogen, only to release it later when warmed up as the ice structure rearranged itself. As it happens, water ice is far more abundant in space, as is radiation's cosmic radiation may be sufficient to produce the necessary pre-baking. Seligman and Bergner collaborated on a study suggesting that Umiwamua required an altogether new category. It wasn't a conventional comet or an asteroid, but rather a dark comet with an undetectable but existent coma. Their explanation explained Umiwamua's acceleration as well as the lack of dust, as dark comets would not need to release dust because they were simply reconfiguring their structures and releasing pockets of invisible gas, rather than blasting gas from their surface like a small, gassy volcano. While this was insufficient to persuade Loeb, who co-authored two more articles in the next month accusing Seligman of weak math while simultaneously pushing his alien spaceship idea, Seligman was already thinking the next step in his own logic. He began to wonder if there were other dark comets out there if Umiwamiwa represented one. He, Bergner, and others began poring over the data on existent objects in our solar system. They weren't interstellar, but was anything else in the solar system accelerating when it shouldn't? They did, indeed, find six that met their requirements. There were six objects that demonstrated non-gravitational, non-solar wind-based acceleration that could not be explained by any known process. These objects were small, with some measuring only three meters across. They resembled asteroids and lacked distinguishing characteristics. They were all near-Earth objects, orbiting so close to Earth that missions to them were quite feasible. And they were all showing signs of speeding up. To be clear, the acceleration was so slight that it had previously gone unnoticed. These aren't spaceships racing throughout the solar system from planet to planet. They are not interstellar in nature. However, science, like Umiwamua, cannot currently account for their velocity, especially since there are no apparent traces of outgassing. And, interestingly, one of them is already set to be visited by 2031. The Japanese Hayabusa 2 probe, an asteroid sample return mission that launched in 2014 and completed its original mission six years later, has been approved a mission extension to visit more asteroids in the near-Earth Apollo group. 
Hayabusa 2 will try to execute a flyby of 1998 KY-26 to learn more about this water-rich small asteroid for the benefit of future human expeditions to Mars. When it arrives, it will be possible to determine what caused the odd acceleration of the 1998 KY-26. It's still unclear who, among the numerous scientists, is correct about Umiwamua. Given that it is now out of our reach, we may never know. But it's certainly exciting that further objects with unusual acceleration have been discovered, and it's quite likely that they will give more light on Umiwamua's possible nature and origins. Seligman will be validated if they are discovered to accelerate by the unseen outgassing of hydrogen. But if a small hatch opens up and a small alien shape peeks out to wave at us before accelerating out of the solar system, we may regret not paying more attention to Loeb. I believe the former is more likely than the latter, because 1998 KY-26 is not a light sail, we have superb imaging of this one. In any case, it will be intriguing to research. Of course, it could turn out that neither theory is accurate. That is science's marvel. The more we study the universe, the more unusual and surprising occurrences we discover, and the more we learn about them, the better our theories become. Perhaps one day we will come across more objects like Umiwamua from outside our solar system, lending credence to a specific hypothesis. The quest, even for dark objects that currently operate under invisible forces, constantly piques my interest. Perhaps by 2031, the hunger for answers will have been satisfied and perhaps we will simply be confronted with more questions. The only way to know is to wait and see. Alright everyone, here's where the video ends. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.